passion? Well, I'm here uh, today on this beautiful summer day in Prospect Park in Redlands uh, with Ross Cooper. And um, he's got a uh, story to share. And so uh, we're just going to ask some questions. We're in the middle of the journey, uh, desert, uh, lessons for pilgrims in the desert. And um, so we're just uh, interviewing people to cr try and uh, see what does the desert experience look like and how did you meet God there. So, Ross, thanks for sharing with us today. You're welcome. So, uh, my first question uh, to you is, um, just maybe before we get started, you, you have a relationship with Christ. Just share a little bit about how long you've had that relationship and, and how you uh, became a believer. Um, I was born again in 1987 when I was 11 years old. Um, and that's when I, my relationship with Christ really started. I suppose I knew him at a cursory level before then, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand him as I understand him now as a, as a Christian believer. Uh, I was born, up a, born in a false religion, and I grew up in a false religion. And we didn't have a correct understanding of a whole lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus Christ especially. But, but uh, the Lord led me to himself. Um, through, 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 uh, through the Bible, I just kind of said to my mom, uh, you know, "I'm going to study the Bible and the Bible alone." And she thought I would would never get into reading the Bible. She kept challenging me, "Well, why don't you read the Bible for yourself?" Hmm. Not thinking I would. Mm -hmm. And then when I read the Bible for myself, that started my my journey out of the false religion. It wasn't anything quick, but sometimes transformation takes a long time because of the person that. The Lord's trying to transform. We can be pretty stubborn, and uh, but it, but in the end, it happened. And and it you know I'm still in a in a learning phase. Mm. Uh, it hasn't been long, you know. And people sometimes don't realize how how much you have to unlearn in order to learn something new. Mm. And and so I'm still unlearning a lot of stuff that. I wish I never got in the first place, almost, and and learning this new stuff um, is is amazing. You know, all the Bible studies I do, and all the studies by myself. I I, I, I read a verse that used to mean nothing to me, and it's like, wow, that's amazing. Where did that come from? Oh, well, it came from a better understanding of my Lord. That's where it came from. So, 1987, uh, your relationship with Christ truly began. That's right. That's good. Right, go ahead. All right. So we're in this uh, desert series. So um, I'd like you just to open by sharing what's your definition of a desert experience. Well, a desert experience is, is uh, when the Lord slows you down and says, "Hey, you need to learn something about me that you don't know yet." Mm. I need to take your foot off the accelerator because I, I love you and I enjoy you like you enjoy me and love me, but there's something about me that you don't quite understand yet. Mm. And I need to take you through something and put you through something in order for you to, to understand me better. Mm. Because, because everything about the Lord and what He puts you through is all about bringing you closer to Him. Mm. It never... Well, desert experience is uh, when God hits pulls on your life, or at least on on your life and uh, your understanding, and mm -hmm. says, "Hey, you don't understand me as well as you think you do, and I love you. The love I have for you won't change, and your love for me is the same as my love for you, so that won't change. But you need to learn something more about it. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to put you through some things that are uncomfortable." You know, but you got to remember, I promise to you, I'll never give you more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. With me, all things are possible. And and sometimes, sometimes it's been rough. Mm. I mean, it, God doesn't promise a smooth ride. You know, for those people who share the gospel, saying that he has a wonderful plan for your life and everything's going to be happy and smiley and you're going to get lots of money and all that stuff. I, you know, no. 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 You know, the gospel is about tough times. It's about, you know, it's about dividing the family. 
mm. you know, it will divide your family from time to time. It certainly split my family up mm. because I went into a correct understanding of Christ and, 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 and His Word, and the majority of my family didn't. So, so, so mm. a desert experience, it, it's there to help you, but through that help, it doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. Mm. It means that there's going to be speed bumps and there's going to be hills that you have to climb. But you're never climbing them alone. Mm. You're always climbing them with God, and that's that's what makes it worth it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. All right, go ahead. Well, Ross, uh, why don't you share a little bit about what your desert experience is or was? Well, my desert experience is both in prison and otherwise. Um, I was born into a desert experience. I was born into false religion. I was born into a family that you know used the Bible all the time. Um, I one thing I thank my uh, upbringing for is that if some pastor says, you know, you don't, you want to turn here, but you want to check it out later, I'll always turn there immediately because I can find books really fast, mm -hmm. you know. And and I thank the Lord for that. That's one thing I really appreciate from that first district experience of, mm -hmm. of false religion, but. Um, my, my, my desert experience has, it evolved from, from, from getting out of false religion into real religion to correctly understanding <laughs> But uh, it started out when I was born because I was born into a false religion mm -hmm. and uh, that false religion is still going strong today and there's lots of people that I know that are part of it. I earnestly seek to share my light with them so that they can get out, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's part of what I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that false religion did help me to learn my books of the Bible really well. Mm -hmm. I can find a passage in a split second, which is, mm -hmm. is great. Um, but after getting out of false religion um, for good, 2004-ish, um, in 2004-ish, the, the next desert experience really began because I, I didn't have a correct understanding of my standing in Christ. I didn't mm -hmm. understand Christianity and the Christian walk and, and what the Holy Spirit does in a Christian at all. Mm -hmm. I was a baby Christian, which was kind of weird after thinking I was a Christian for 25 years, you know, but mm -hmm. I really wasn't. I didn't have an understanding of it at all. And because of that, the devil used that to his advantage and pretty much ripped my marriage apart. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was really tough. Uh, because I'm trying to be a, 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 a loving husband and and, a, and pretty soon it was a, a loving father and 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 not having work and and, and uh, you know all these things contributed to the breakdown of, of the marriage over the next couple of years and 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 uh, well the force hasn't gone through yet but you know I'm I'm here in, in California. Uh, she is up in Oregon, and my boys are being adopted by her mom and dad. Uh, mm -hmm. At least they're being raised in, in a non-denominational Calvary Chapel setting, which mm -hmm. I praise the Lord for, because if they were being raised up in, in a false religion, it would be as if this whole desert experience <laughs> yeah. wasn't worth it. But, but um, the desert experience is, is always worth it, because I did come to a full understanding of my standing as a, as a Christian. And uh, when I did, I sent a five-page email to my wife explaining that I understood now and uh, apologizing for not being the, the sort of husband and father and man that God expects us to be to our wives and our girlfriends and to our, our, our children. And uh, uh, the hardest thing was never getting a response to that. I poured my heart and soul into that email and I never got a single sentence back. And it's like... Was it even worth it? And 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 it was. It was because to help me understand Christianity correctly through the internet and through phone calls before you know we met online in 1999. Mm -hmm. So she she helped me understand what Christianity was about through the internet. Mm -hmm. One, one year we racked up 900 plus dollars in long distance phone calls because I didn't realize we didn't have long distance coverage. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and I had to pay for all that out of my savings. Yeah, um, but she she was through the Holy Spirit, and and her work together to draw me out of that Adventism. Mm -hmm. So was she? Uh, she was a believer. He is a believer. It, it, you know what? I I still say she is. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's not up to me to judge, say. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, some things that she's she's done seem not. You know, but uh, all of us do bonehead things. Mm -hmm. All of us make big goof ups, mm -hmm. and and it's not up to me to say that. Um, but you know, we're still amicable. We just don't talk very much and unfortunately it's the same thing with my boys you know I'll go you know what I'm gonna call them every Sunday afternoon you know they'll be at home I'll know they're at home yeah. they'll have gotten home from church mm -hmm. you know and then and then I'll forget mm -hmm. I'll forget I'll forget and then I'll remember to call them up every once in a while and we'll have our general conversation which is daddy mm -hmm. yeah it's me mm -hmm. how are you Jonathan I'm good daddy how are you oh I'm pretty good mm -hmm. How school? Oh, school's okay, Daddy. And it goes on and on like yeah. that for about five minutes, and it's, and then yeah. they put one of the other kids on the phone. Yeah, you know, and and it 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 breaks my heart. But uh, I I think that the 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 most uh, the most effectual thing that my kids ever said to me was my son Thomas, who has Asperger's syndrome. He uh, when he was one and a quarter. <laughs> Uh, I visited them for the day, and at the end of each day, I take them apart and se separately, and I say, "Yeah, Daddy has to go back to work now." I was living with my mom at the time, 125 miles away, and uh, I took Thomas aside, and I, s I opened my mouth to say, "Daddy loves you, but he has to go back to work now," and he says to me, "Daddy, I know you love me." <laughs> and. Uh, always love you too. And this is the Asperger's kid who barely says a word, who put together a sentence that's more complicated than one his two-year-old brother can. Mm. Out of nowhere. And I felt like I was going to immediately break down in tears and I'm like, I cannot afford to do that because then all the boys will be upset all evening and they'll never go to sleep. Mm. Uh, so I, I said, I love you too, kid, and got out to the car. And I just broke down my inner signal because it was, mm. it was too much, you know. I'm the one that they still call daddy. They don't call anyone else daddy. And, and that means so much to me because, yeah, I'm their dad. And, and stepmom Lois says, you know, you, you, you may not officially have the rights of the father anymore. You may not be the dad on the paper anymore. Mm -hmm. But you're still their dad. And you're welcome to visit any time you can come up here. Mm -hmm. You're welcome to stay on the couch, whatever. You know, we love you, Ross. And, and we hate the way things have turned out. Mm -hmm. But it's all part of, you know, mm -hmm. I would say it's all part of the desert experience. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and the devil doesn't play fair. He never does. Mm -hmm. But the Lord only gives the devil so much leeway. The devil has to ask to torment you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and... Yeah. And uh, the Lord will never give you more than you can handle. I'd like to ask another question here. Sure. I'm starting to get in the sun. <laughs> can I move? <laughs> still feel like you're in the desert experience. I mean, you really answered that, but I, I, I like what you talked about, the oasis, and, and I'd love to, for you to talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask the question, and um, and then, I don't know, Daniel, if you just want to move back there. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, how, you've already shared this a little bit, but, you know, obviously you feel like you're still in the desert experience. I was going to ask how long has it lasted? <laughs> Yeah, the, the desert experience, it, I guess it kind of paused for a while uh, in 2003, 2004, and then it picked up again. Um, okay, pause for a second. Go ahead. Keep, you can continue. Okay, keep and, uh, and it became an a, a attack on my family, as I said. Um, and, and uh, you know, the devil won that round. You know, I give that round to him. But the Lord still got my soul, and, mm -hmm. and that's what counts. 
um, in, in that desert experience that, that I'm in now, um, I, I, I guess, you know, you could say I found, found the oasis in there. And, and the, the oasis is that I keep finding knowledge of, of, of God. It's a deeper understanding of God and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and who I am in Christ. Mm. And, 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 and everything that, that, that the Lord has, has done in this desert experience has, has just opened a revolution in, in my thinking about who God is. You know, when I when I first when I first uh, came to to Christ, I thought of God as the celestial cop. You know, and he just wanted to keep smacking me up the head for doing something wrong. You know, and 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 it's like no, 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 no. He's like no, that's not who I am. Who I am is is your father, mm-hmm. and I only chasten you and hasten you because I love you. And I loved you by say, sending your, my, myself and my son to die on the cross for you. Mm. To take the wrath that was destined for you upon myself through him. Mm. And, 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 now, and now that you've accepted that, you got to come to an understanding of who you are in me. You know, I see you as if you're wearing my son. Mm. I see you as if you are as sinless as he is now you're not don't get that wrong you're not but i see you as if you're covered by that Mm. i impute that to you and uh and 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 the holy spirit lives in you child of god don't forget that now that was totally new to me i was like what Mm. you know and if i had understood that earlier back in 2004 mm. maybe instead of 2008 maybe maybe things would have been different mm. but that wasn't why I was in my walk I was mm. still a baby Christian I didn't understand that the Holy Spirit came and lived in me the moment of conversion I didn't get that mm. that made no sense to me because as in my false religion we didn't have a correct understanding of the spirit mm. so so we just thought it was breath I mean, yeah. oh that doesn't make any sense you know but as it's gone on, you know, I've understood the Holy Spirit lives in me, and He's the seal of God. And what God seals, He doesn't unseal. Now there's some security right there, <laughs> you know. And 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 every time I find, think I, I I know it all, He goes, No, you don't. You're you're not a know it all. You, you got a lot of learning to do, kid. <laughs> and He He reveals him something else about Himself, and that's. That's the oasis that I found. Mm. Is that I'm always learning something new about him, and it's just—it's wonderful. It's amazing because there's just so much to him that I don't know, mm-hmm. and th- and everything that I learn that's new, it just adds another layer of awesome to a slice of awesome cake. Mm-hmm. You cool. know. Wow, you, you're very, um, you're just very clear in just your understanding and, and as a communicator for us, it's a, definitely a gift the Lord's given you. Yeah. So, so. yeah, it yeah is. I'm sitting here listening to you thinking, man, you should be like, you know, I mean, God's given you right now that, that ministry to write yeah. and the blog, but uh, I, I think you may have more in store for you just to, I think so. to be a teacher of His Word. To be really honest about that, mm-hmm. when I was in the, the false religion, mm-hmm. every year I'd give a give a sermon, mm-hmm. and after the sermon I'd shake hands with everyone. And mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, someone the pop up with a question, "Are oh, you going to be like a pastor, like your dad?" Mm-hmm. And I would think about it. I'd always give it a lot of thought, and I go, "No, I'm thinking about it. I'm not not answering you." And I'd always go, "You know what? No, no, I don't want to be a pastor like my dad." And, and after I was born again and after I was rebaptized and mm-hmm. went to Calvary Chapel and began understanding who Christ really is, now when people ask me, hey, do you want to be a pastor? Mm-hmm. I go, yeah. And, and people that knew me before go, well, what's the difference? And I go, well, now I know who Christ really, really is and now I have a correct understanding of everything that I didn't have a correct understanding before. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and if the Lord makes it possible then 
by golly, I'm going to do it, you know, because, yeah, my blog's great, you know, and my, my blog for mm -hmm. the false religion's great, too, and, and, and my, my stories that he has me write and other things like that. I love doing that, but I also love sharing my faith, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and the way I share it is never the way I go about planning to share it in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know where that slice of awesome cake came from, but it's not from me, it's from, from God. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess he wanted to remind me to remind people that you got to taste and see that the Lord's good. And mm. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um. I want to... Um, There's a lot of stuff here. There's a lot. We're losing our sun, right? Yeah. Uh, or we're, we're losing our shade. We're <laughs> gaining the sun. So, yeah. um, Ross, I, you've said so many great things. Um, I, uh, I honestly, uh, it's just rich. Um, You know, I'm trying to think, what <laughs> questions do I ask? Um, here's... Here's one I'd like to ask. So, do you want to move around or just have me ask it, Daniel? Huh? Uh, you can just ask it. Okay. Um, what did, how has your view of others changed since your time? It's changed a lot. Um, when I was growing up, I used to to not trust others as much. I'd always think they were getting into my business. They would seem to be poking their noses in where they didn't belong. It was kind of frustrating. Uh, people assumed they knew what I was doing when they didn't know what I was doing. They, they, they claimed that I was doing things I wasn't doing, and it, it was frustrating. Um, you know, they, they claimed I was off in my room creating my own fantasy worlds, and yes, I do do that. I'm a screenwriter, mm -hmm. but I was studying my way out of false religiosity. That's what I was doing in my room most of the time, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and now, you know, I used to, I personally used to think of, I, I just couldn't trust anyone mm -hmm. except for God, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and then it was kind of on that, <laughs> You know, how's this going sort of basis? Yeah. But, but then that, that, that changed. That changed when the Lord revealed just who He was and how much He cared for me personally. I mean, you know, He's the one that saved me from the pit. You know, He's, he's the one that reached down and literally pulled me out. You know, if I can't trust that, then there's something desperately wrong with me. And, and, and as, I, as I grew in my Christian walk, um, I ended up becoming much more chilled, mm -hmm. relaxed, you know, just open to the fact that, look, not everyone's going to agree with me. Some people are going to be jerks and, mm -hmm. and not be very nice in what they're saying. Some people are going to drive past me on the street and honk for no other reason than to scare me, mm -hmm. you know, or yell at me. And I call them yellers, you know, I, I walk everywhere, so it still happens. <laughs> but it's like, you know, usually I would have thought, you know, well, you too, you know, mm -hmm. and but not anymore. I just go, Lord, I don't know what's up with them, but, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, forgive them because, you know, what they're doing is pretty stupid. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, the, the way my, uh, I used to have a very quick temper, and that's changed as well. A lot since, since Christ found me and I came to a better understanding of him. Mm -hmm. I, I used to just snap out and do a lot of damage just with my words. Mm -hmm. And now he's turned my words into words of healing. Praise God. Yeah. But uh, you're very eloquent. I, I wouldn't want to be on the other <laughs> end. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hear your words. <laughs> but uh, you know that whole quick temper thing. You know that nearly came up and reared its ugly head when when my new bike broke. Yeah. You know I was just cycling and I barely had it for eight hours. Mm -hmm. and I was changing gears on Rounds Boulevard and. Crunch, could you yeah. I look back and I go, what the? <laughs> you know, and if it had been a few years ago, I would have been cursing up a storm. I would have thrown my back into the orange groves <laughs> and gone, forget it. 
But I looked up to heaven and I said out loud, I'm like, Lord, you're just waiting mm -hmm. for that moment, weren't you? So you could laugh along with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's cool. <laughs> um, I would like you to share, uh, just kind of in closing, uh, uh, what would you tell someone who's going through a desert experience right now? What I'd say is that your desert experience is there for a reason. And it's going to lead you to a better understanding. It's going to lead you to a closer walk with Christ. Every desert experience that I've gone through has been directed by Christ to illuminate more about Him. And, and while a desert experience may seem like it's never going to end, and perhaps this one won't until I'm in heaven, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it's always good. I've never had a des desert experience that's bad. It's always led to just amazing revelations about who Christ is and who God is. And, and, and it's enabled his living water to flow out of me, you know, like torrents. It used to be a trickle and now it's a torrent. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really what the desert experience is for. It's there, to, it's there to make you into a better Christian. It's there to transform your understanding of who Christ is. Because Christ doesn't just meet you in the desert, He transforms you there. Mm. And He doesn't leave you there to starve. He feeds you with the Word mm. and the living water of the, the Bible. And, and, and He's, you know, I, I always say, you know, two of my favorite things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And, uh, and he's there. There's never a moment he's not there. You can always count on him to be there, unlike earthly friends who sometimes can't be reached. God can always be reached. You have full access to the throne and to go up and say the most silly, childish things, you know, the, the silliest prayers you could possibly think of and God will just, he'll smile, he'll love it. He'll be like, well, thank you for talking to me today. You remembered, you know. <laughs> and so many times we rush around this life and we forget. And the desert experience is there to, to get us to remember. Mm. Slow down and remember. Don't be in such a hurry to get out of your desert experience that you don't actually learn what the Lord mm. put you there for. Yeah. Because if you do, then He'll just put you in another one. Mm. And you'll go, man, why am I in another desert experience? Yeah. You're there to learn. That's great advice. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks for sharing, Ross. I, You're welcome. I really, really, um, I think it's going to really encourage people. And certainly honor, the, it's honor the Lord. I mean, <laughs> just the, the things that I think he really, really has deepened your understanding of, of him. Yeah. And so, through it. And 